When I started lifting, I didn't know much at all, but what I did know was that I needed to get in the gym. However, there was a big problem. I had no friends. Actually, I still have no friends. Anyways, the big problem was I pretty much had no idea what I was doing in the gym, but we all start somewhere. Eventually, through experience, and just having absolutely no f***ing life, you know, sitting on my phone all day, and researching optimal lifting strategies, I kind of figured it out. So today, I'm gonna give you guys things I wish I knew when I started lifting. To kick things off, and this was actually the biggest motivator for me getting into the gym, stop focusing on abs and trying to get lean. I think this is probably the number one mistake all lifters make when they're starting out, and it makes sense. I mean, abs are pretty much the coolest looking muscle on your entire body. Who doesn't want a six pack? But our goal here is to look jacked, not like the main character from The Machinist. The end of a cut is pretty much the pinnacle of any lifter's physique. But the problem here is when you're first starting out, there's no physique to cut down. Pretty much 90% of cases, you're going to be best off starting out in a caloric surplus. That way, you can actually build up the muscle mass and frame underneath your fat and cut down later when you actually have the muscle already built. If you're brand new to the gym, of course you can get away with recomping or even build a little bit of muscle while in a deficit. Personally, this is something I did, but if I were to go back and kind of rewrite history a little bit, I wish that I could have started out just a little bit lighter, that way I could get away with eating in a caloric surplus when I started lifting, because really that's how you're going to make the most progress. Which leads me to my next point. Bulking is an art. Now that might be a little over dramatic because it's literally just eating, but what I mean by this phrase is bulking is really about adjusting your calories to that perfect amount where you're gaining the most amount of muscle tissue possible with the least amount of fat. Dirty bulking's great until you look in the mirror after your gym session and the cut you have to do afterwards. If I could go back in time, I don't know if I would necessarily never have dirty bulked. I feel like it's almost one of those things that you have to experience in order to realize why you shouldn't do it. And then there's also the fact that some people really just have to dirty bulk in order to actually put on a good amount of weight. Personally, what makes bulking so challenging for me is the fact that my appetite is genuinely bottomless. I can easily clear five to 7,000 calories a day. And it's for those of you who are in a similar boat that this advice is really targeted to. It's not as cool, it's not as sexy, but really take the extra two to three weeks, adjust your calories, start out at what you think your maintenance is, track your weight while you're eating it, and then shoot for a 500 calorie surplus and aim to gain about a pound a week. It's the real sweet spot when it comes to bulking. Now, if you're either really underweight or you're like my roommate who just for some reason has absolutely no appetite and just needs to force down Twinkies in order to gain a measurable amount of mass, then yeah, maybe dirty bulking is an option for you. But even then, if you spend the extra effort to actually track your calories and your weight in coordination with your intake, your progress over the long term is going to be far better. Next up, going back to every beginner lifter's obsession with abs is something that took me a year and a half of lifting to realize. And that is, hitting legs will actually get you closer to getting a six pack than hitting your abs will. Now, if you're new to fitness, you probably are wondering what the f*** is this guy talking about? Or if you're a little bit more advanced, you might be thinking, oh, well, he's probably about to say deadlifting and squats also hit your abs. So of course it's going to help you build your abs. But what I'm actually getting at is the amount of muscle mass you can actually put on your physique by just hitting your legs is going to be so substantial it's going to make any amount of ab training you do look almost meaningless. Now this stems from the idea that the most surefire way to get a six pack of course is your body fat percentage. Getting leaner is going to be what allows you to see your six pack. So with that in mind increasing your actual lean mass you know through just the biggest muscles on your body that you can get the most amount of pounds of muscle on your frame from is going to move you substantially closer to getting there than hitting your abs. Now this doesn't mean you shouldn't hit your abs. You should apply the same training principles to your ab muscles that you do any other muscle in your body. But I spent a year and a half of my lifting career skipping leg day. And it was only when I realized this that I actually started hitting my legs. And embarrassingly is part of why I still put so much effort into hitting my legs. If over the course of a few years you put on an extra 10 pounds of muscle in your legs. That's 10 pounds heavier you can be while having a six pack. Training is just the bare minimum. If your diet and sleep isn't dialed in, you're just going to be spinning your wheels in the gym and getting nowhere. Training is going to be kind of like what gives your body the option to even be capable 
of building muscle and improving your actual physique. Your diet and sleep is gonna be what actually does it. This is of course because recovery is what builds your physique, not the training itself. Your training stimulus is kind of just what tells your body, oh, maybe we should build some muscle mass. It could be a good idea, I don't know. Hang on, wait, can we even build muscle mass? Oh wait, there's literally no fucking protein or calories in us. Never mind, we're just gonna fucking do nothing. Try to sleep at least seven or eight hours, eat enough calories, and then eat enough protein. Try to divide it throughout the day as much as you can. Now, in my opinion, sleep is pretty much non negotiable but as far as diet goes if it's not possible for you to eat five meals of 40 grams of protein throughout the day it's not the end of the world if your macros and numbers are in check you're still going to make progress just fine but it's just more optimal to space it out throughout the day finally track your progress now for me i've been regularly tracking my progress from the very beginning with just taking pictures of myself in the mirror genuinely takes 30 seconds and it became something i look forward to in my routine but as i became more advanced in the gym i realized it's important to be tracking all aspects of your fitness, your visual progression in the mirror, your weight, your calories, your lifts, and just your overall progress in all areas. Data is going to be what eliminates all confusion in your fitness progress. If you have all of the data available to you when it comes to your progress, then there's going to be no confusion when things slow down or something unexpected happens. For example, if on your last workout, because you tracked it, you know that you hit seven reps on 225 for bench. This workout, if for whatever reason you only hit six, you can go into your calories and see, oh, the past week, my calories have been a little low. It kind of makes sense why I'm not really progressing in my strength. Or if you wake up one morning and your weight is all of a sudden up five pounds, you can go into my fitness pal yesterday and see, oh shit, I ate 2 million grams of sodium and 4,000 calories. That's probably why my weight's up five pounds today. Now, it's not like this is non-negotiable. Of course, you can do pretty much none of this and still make progress just fine. But if you're someone who's really motivated in the gym, you wanna make a ton of progress and to be tracking nothing at all just doesn't make any sense. Personally, I just like to track everything because I kind of like the idea that almost everything in my fitness can almost be boiled down to mathematics. Like I can genuinely go into MyFitnessPal and see everything lines up from a weight and calorie perspective. I'm eating at a five 500 calories surplus every day. That equates to 3,500 calories a week. I'm gonna gain a pound a week. On top of my calories, my protein intake's dialed in. I know what numbers I did on my last lift. I can progressive overload and raise the intensity a little bit because I have all of the data there at my fingertips on my phone available to me. And then I just wanna reiterate real quick the importance of sleep. You probably hear it in like half the fitness videos you watch, but really, it is that important. I mean, even outside of the gym, when I don't sleep, I feel like there's something mentally wrong with me. The complete lack of mental sharpness is just no good in any aspect of your life. I think when you're younger, it's even easier to be overlooking it. I mean, in college, it feels like pretty much no one my age is getting enough sleep. I get on my roommate all the time for it. Even if you feel like you're more productive pulling an all-nighter, you're gonna pay the price for it, not just in your gains. Like, you'll genuinely die sooner if you don't sleep. If the video was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. I'm a pretty new YouTuber, so every subscriber helps my channel grow. And for those of you that really like me and want to help me buy a Lamborghini later, I recently just started doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. If doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with me is something that might be interesting to you, it's the first link in the description. Thanks for watching.